Okay, so here we are with part two, and I share with you why I'm so ticked at Bob Marzono. Well, maybe not Bob himself, but the company he worked for at the time, or research lab he worked for at the time, or anyway, I was upset with the whole situation. Because hopefully you can look at this Marzano vocab system and go, hey, this is good. This is solid stuff. It gets me one, two, three, four summarizations that's on the track to long term memory. Which, by the way, depending on the research that you look at, it could be anywhere from I've seen as low as four times converts it to long-term memory to upwards of 36 to long-term memory. Depends on the study. I always shoot for seven. Why? It's just a number I pulled out of thin air that worked for me. But if you go to slide seven on my PowerPoint, you'll see what upset me about this. Because... They started looking at, and go to slide 8, a system or a way to sell this to teachers and make a lot of money on it. Of it. And by the way, you saw the pile of books I had there. That's a lot of money going into it. So this became a money maker. If you look there at slide 8 and look at it closely, you'll look and see and go, what's the difference? Why are they selling this? Well... Again, maybe I'm from the old school where you beg, borrow, steal ideas and share those ideas if they work. Okay? If you look in the upper corner, upper right corner of each of those uh, concept things, it has my understanding. And it has a number one through four. So here's the thing. There's self-assessment involved. And what if we started pulling this into our kids' learning of it? Hey, come up with this concept. If you look at the next one, the next slide, slide nine, I have primary sources. Put in the upper right corner. Give me an evaluation of your understanding of primary sources after filling out this card. A four means that you could teach it and understand it completely. A three means that you think you have the idea, but you got it pretty good. A two means... Eh, I think I understand it, but I'm a little shaky. A one means you were in the room consuming oxygen. Or that's how I share it with my kids. Likewise, I use e-gaps for whenever I show a little video clip for kids and they have to evaluate it. Excellent, good, average, poor, stinky. Another thing you might be able to take, I don't know. But this self-assessment thing... It allows you real quickly, if you're in the classroom, to have kids give you the data that you need without much work. I collect them as an exit card. Ah, four, four, three, four, four, three, 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 four, four. My work here is done. I'm a genius. They're going to carry me off on their shoulders. Now we can just assess it tomorrow. Or, one, two, 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 one, zero, one, two, two. Ooh, we need to reteach simple way that you can use assessment there and think of this in a zoom meeting as well and some of you probably do this have kids self-evaluate with zoom you can do it without any noise at all in the classroom you can have kids do that in your zoom virtual classroom as well just simple ways that we can get kids communicating and giving us feedback there. On slide 10, reinforce effort and recognition and homework. Number three is pretty important, and I think we could all agree with that. From what we've talked about in Module 1 and Module 2, it's going to be even more important to have kids self-evaluate but more importantly, recognizing students in general. In the reinforcing part or the recognition part, that's the piece, the mental health piece, the uh, connectivity piece, the relationship piece. We've got to be able to do that. You know, I had a teacher colleague of mine. She, she was just starting out her career. She had a room next to me. She had replacing a... a great teacher 
and teaching high school English. We have the same kids. My kids in social studies, they got standard of excellence on their junior year's t test. The same kids for junior English, language arts, they about got the school put on uh, on a probation or, or whatever the term was back at that time. And we're standing out doing hall duty in between class periods. And she was kind of brusque with me earlier in the day. And I was like, man, that's not like her. That, Oh, well. And so she finally said, I got to ask you something. I said, okay, go. How'd you do it? How'd I do what? Well, your guys got standard of excellence, and our guys about got put on improvement. There's the term that they used at the time. And I said, do you really want to know? And she said, yes. And I said, it's going to hurt. And she steeled herself and said, yeah. And I said, my kids would run through a brick wall for me. I forged relationships with them. That's what I did the first two weeks of school, made sure that they knew who I was, what I was about, what type of teacher I am, and I spend time talking with them, not at them, with them. And she thought really hard, said, thank you, walked away. She came back totally different teacher started talking with kids not at kids and so by recognizing kids and their efforts you can make the relationship piece is vital to education have kids self-evaluate their performance by the way okay uh, on some of the projects that I did I would have kids fill out a timesheet Hey, what'd you do today? Da 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 da. When'd you start? Nine o five when the second hour bell rang. When'd you end? Ten o two when the second by third hour bell rang. What'd you do today? And I tell kids, be honest on this, which is much better than having them do it at the end of a group project. I mean, when you have that relationship with kids, they're going to be brutally honest. And I wouldn't have it any other way, as a matter of fact. I want kids to be brutally honest with themselves, with me. Find different ways of doing it. Reinforce effort and recognition. It's going to be tough in this virtual world. We've got to find ways of doing it. Maybe it's that simple sending an email to a kid. Hey, how you doing? You did great today. Keep it up. Those are vital things for what we want kids to do. Step or, uh, Strategy number four is homework. Bob Marzano caused an entire classroom, or not a classroom, an auditorium of teachers. There were about, I want to say, 500 teachers there that day listening to Bob. And I've never seen any setting that had 500 teachers where they all went ah! and there was silence Bob asked what is the purpose of homework formative or summative and his response shocked all the teachers he says homework should be summative they should have had the learning mastered already. And not to poke fun at any of our math teachers, even though they seem like the target of all of our rants. But I still remember tears in my eyes, struggling, doing a massive math assignment, do the next day, problems 1 through 80, even. Because the odds, the answers were in the back of the book. Well, let's take Bob's approach here and make it a summative assessment. If what we do is make kids master it first and then demonstrate that mastery, do I have to assign 40 math problems? 
Now I can pick do number 2, 22, 42, 62, and what the hey, 78. You know how to do these. Because if they, we assign the 40 problems for them to do, and it's a spiraling curriculum where if you don't know number 2, there's no way you're going to get number 24. What are we doing to kids there? And let me just use this as an example. My middle son, who is very smart, but only wants to work on what he wants to work on. Well, the way he makes it through math every now and then is to copy his buddy's assignment. And he, he'll take a chewing from mom and dad, but he gets the assignment done. Did he learn anything? No. Think of this in our virtual setting, though. If we can still find a way to make practice and the formative learning of it a non-threatening, a non-involved process, then we can do use our technological devices for summative assessment. And then we can use them finally as this grand summative assessment maybe a performance assessment, maybe an authentic assessment. We can find ways of make, maximizing our time and again going back the essentials. That becomes the key to this. Finally, or not finally, but the last one for this video, strategy six, cooperative learning. If you look at slide 11, it gives you the overview of it. I'm a Kagan guy. I was trained in Kagan back in 1996. Okay. Cooperative learning, true cooperative learning, there are roles to play. Now, if I had all of you in a classroom right now, I'd say, I would imagine most of you, when assigned a group project, took the approach that you told one of the kids in your group stay away from everything don't touch anything I've got this because I don't trust my grade in your hands and I know that because your teachers probably about I'd say 70 percent of you would have responded at least to one of your group mates like that you may not have been as mean about it as I just demonstrated but that's what happened True cooperative learning has roles to play, has positive interdependence, individual accountability, equal participation, and simultaneous interaction. The Kagan folks call that PIES for the acronym for it. And when we come back for part three of this video, I'm going to shove some pie in your face and show you some of the roles that you can formulate for a cooperative learning experience online. Catch you in a second.